in. All right, so welcome everyone to functional training. Um, today we're gonna be starting off with uh, some uh, lower body movements, uh, some mobility work just to get uh, loosened up here. Um, so if everyone could please just stand up, make sure you have space around you, 360 degrees all around. We're gonna be doing different um, planes of movement direction. Um, we're gonna start off with some lateral um, side to side lunges um, turned into a stretch. So let's start with the lunge position, lateral, so remember, feet a little bit wider than normal, and maybe even a bit more. And what you're gonna do is take your one hand and you're gonna reach down towards the floor as you do your lateral lunge. And you're only doing partial range of motion, just enough to have a bit of a dynamic stretch of the hamstrings and the glutes. So you're just reaching straight down and as you begin to warm up a bit more, you can feel free to increase the range of motion. And one way of doing that is to pretend like you're gonna to touch the floor even lower. So, and then it'll force your lower body to go down more. And while you're doing this movement, try to look forward. So keep your eyes straight ahead and don't look down. And if you look down, your upper body rest of the torso will follow it and you don't want to bend over too much okay we'll do a couple more and then we're going to go into our lunge position so pivoting here and we're going to do our thoracic spine stretch so your left hand on the inside of that foot rotate twisting your body reaching straight up to the ceiling and then bring that other hand down on the inside of the foot and rotate the other way, okay? You guys all know this stretch now and you should be comfortable performing it. The idea is to progress so you can increase the range of motion and feel more comfortable doing it. Okay, we're gonna stand back up in that same wide stance and continue the partial range of motion, lateral side to side lunge just reaching down a little bit. The hand gesture is really just an, an, an added, I guess, something to distract yourself. And then eventually you're gonna use this hand to indicate how low you're going. So the further down you touch with your hand, the further down you're obviously lunging. Perfect. We'll go four, three, two, one, and then pivot this way, taking the right hand, placing it down the inside of the foot and rotating the opposite way. And reaching as high as you can up straight to the ceiling. And you're gonna bring that hand down and rotate this way. And you might notice on one side, you're able to rotate further. And this is fairly common. One side will be a little bit tighter, a little bit restricted range of motion. The idea is to recognize that and to hopefully um, fix it um, by working on some uh, balance exercises to, to focus on uh, fixing that, um, that posture or that lack of mobility on one side, okay? While we're on the floor, we're gonna do our scapular push-ups. So um, just to start from the knees, hands are directly underneath your shoulders. And remember, it's not a full push-up. So all you're doing is dropping your shoulder blades together and then separating them. Opening and closing the shoulder blades while keeping the arm extended. You're not bending the arm. You're just keeping them locked straight in an extended position and you're just opening and closing your shoulder blades. Very important, really helps stabilize the shoulder and prevent injury from any upper body excessive movement. I strongly suggest doing these, even if it's a total body workout, it's just a good way to increase mobility of your upper body. And if we're sitting down all day at your computer, and your posture is horrible. <laughs> this is a good exercise to do 
to loosen it up. Okay, perfect. And we're gonna slowly stand back up. Great, okay, perfect. All right, now what we're gonna do is no weights. What I would like to try to do again is to fully master these fundamental skills like the balance and coordination um, and to repeat doing the same progressive exercise, which is the hinge, the single legged hinge. So what you're doing is alternating sides. So what I want you to do is to stick out, let's say your left leg and then bring it back up. And then again, sticking out the right leg, see the balance, it's always tough. Put the hand down on the floor if you need to and bring it back in. And when you're going down, you're almost kind of doing this that runner stride or the skater stride, that athletic stance with your arms as opposed to them just sitting down at the sides doing nothing. It really helps with that kind of what we'd call the old trophy stance. I'm the guy on top of the trophy. <laughs> okay, so alternating sides, left arm in front. If it's the left leg behind, extend it as far back and as high as you can, and then you bring it back and then switch. Athletics trophy stance, back and switch. Let's keep this going before we use any weights. And to make it a little easier, or not easier, but to take advantage of the position, try to rotate your body so that your right elbow is over top of the other knee, okay? We'll do one more each side. Last one. And done, great. So it's always a really good idea to start with something like that before you do any explosive high impact exercises that require jumping or landing um, to get that balance down first. Okay, now go ahead and grab a weight. Okay, make sure you have enough room above you. So we're gonna do that same thing. So for example, if you have your right foot on the floor, your left leg is gonna kick out behind you, have the weight in your right hand. And then I want you to pull the weight back and then forward. And what you're gonna feel is you're gonna feel your shoulder is what in your triceps because you're basically kicking that weight back and pulling it in. So you can't use a heavy weight doing this type of exercise. Okay, it's gotta be five pounds, maybe even less. Okay, so it's down, extend the weight back and pull it back forward. Extend the weight back, pull it back forward. Let's keep going on one side. We're sticking with this right side, kick the weight back, pull it back in. Back, back in. We'll do a few more on this side. So this way, your arm now will feel tired as well as the one leg that's stabilizing. So you've got a lot going on to think about here. Remember, you gotta be mindful of what you're doing. No distractions. Focus, we'll go one more. And done, other side, okay? So you should feel a little bit of fatigue in your shoulder there. Okay, so left hand has the weight. Your left foot is planted, your right foot is kicking back. Okay, so ready? Kick the weight back and pull it back in. Kick the weight back and back in. And keep going. It is a bit more of an advanced movement. You have a lot going on at once, but that's the idea. It's a progression from what we were doing previously. And last one. 
and finish. Okay, set that weight down. Active recovery, so just walking around as the heart rate comes back down. Okay, back down to the floor. All right, so with that exercise we just did, was a progression from not only the warm up without the weight, but in previous sessions, we've done the hinge exercise or the single legged deadlift exercise, where one leg is holding you up, kicking out the other leg, and then we can always incorporate an upper body movement. So instead of a row, we did a kickback. So as you're kicking back your leg, you're doing your arm at the same time. So a lot of multitasking, right? It's kind of like doing a hand tapping and, and <laughs> like that. Um, but obviously you're working the total body, you're getting your shoulders and your arms, muscular uh, strength and endurance, and obviously your lower body and core to keep it all straight, okay? So those are just some ideas you can incorporate into that same movement. Uh, okay, perfect, so now we're gonna go back to the push-up position, the scapular push-up position. And this time, keeping that weight nearby. So what you're gonna do is called a renegade row. Um, so actually, you know what, let's do both weights. So if you do have the two, bring both of them in. And what you're gonna do is in a push-up position, either from the feet, like the full one, or just from the knees, it's up to you. You're gonna do a push-up coming up, and then pull the weight. So down, up, roll that weight, okay? So if you're feeling like you have some extra strength, then you can do the full one from the toes. And if it's not quite there, or it's too difficult, you can do it from the knees, okay? All right, so here we go. So starting in that push-up position, holding the weights. Okay, ready to go into your push-up. Up, roll the weight. And down, here we go. Push-up and roll. Try not to twist the body too much so you're not fully rotating when you do the row. And we'll go three more. One, two, Three, and done. Okay, push those weights aside. Slowly standing up. And again, active recovery. Grab a water if you need to. Okay, then we're just gonna do a dynamic stretch here. So we're gonna do what's called good mornings. So what we're gonna do, standing with your feet hip width apart, just about here. And you're gonna hinge down. And I wanna have your hands gliding down the side of your leg and stopping when you feel the tightness of the hamstring. So I'm at about 90 degrees. You don't have to go that far down, or you can go further if you can. So I want you to go down for three. So one, two, three, and then up for one. One, two, three, up for one. One more. And uh, good. It's just good to kind of keep the hamstrings lengthened during the workout, okay? So they don't get too fatigued or too tight. Okay, our next one here is always a challenge. <laughs> it's 
So what we're gonna do, this one requires a lot of movement and it's kind of the peak movement of everything we do. And I like to place it somewhere in the middle or the end of the workout so that you're not too fatigued, but you're also warmed up enough to perform the movements. So uh, this one is the half burpee with the shoulder raise or the clean. So there's a lot going on here. There's a lot of coordination involved. So um, what you're gonna be doing is you're gonna have both of your weights again, and you're gonna have them in the middle of your legs. And what you're gonna do is you're gonna do a half burpee. So you're gonna go down to the floor, kick out your legs behind you. You're gonna jump in. And then before you stand up, you're going to grab the weights and swing them just slightly above your shoulders. But you're never actually gonna stand up all the way. So all you're doing here is you're going down to the floor, out, in, grab the weights, and pull. Pull up, okay? All right, so we're gonna do about 10 repetitions. This is a hard one, here we go. Ready? And down we go, here we go. Burpee, out, in, and raise. Good, two, out, in, raise. Three, Halfway there. Two more. Last one. And raise. Okay. That's a good one. That one requires a bigger break. So we'll take one minute break. Active recovery, stay moving. Some water if you need to. Okay, down to the floor, nice and easy. Okay, we're gonna do our two deep breaths. Ready? And out. And now just some shoulder rolls up to the ears, back and down, up. Back and down. And the opposite direction. So back up, out and forward. One more. Done, beautiful, okay. Slowly standing up again. Okay, now you're gonna need one weight. All right, so we're gonna do our wood chop variation. So just, as you recall, a wood chop or a torso rotation is any time you are doing this rotation movement and you're involving the torso. So you're not using your upper body to rotate. It's all coming from the hips. So we've done countless variations you can do one just standing in a squat position, kneeling, half kneeling, lunges, etc. This one though is the harder <laughs> version. So we got level one and two we're gonna do right now. And that is going down into a reverse lunge, rotate. And then when you come up, you go into a squat. So you don't actually stand up all the way. So down, rotate, and then up to here, down, up to here, okay? Level two, which we're gonna do in a couple minutes, is more high impact. So it's rotation with the hops, okay? All right, so let's get ready for level one, and that's with the squat and hold. 
And when you do the rotation, you should only be rotating to shoulder level and no higher, not above your head, okay? Here we go. Down and to here. Down to here. Keep that going. One more. And done, drop the weight, active recovery, shake off the legs. Okay, now we're gonna get ready for level two. <clears throat> All right, here we go. Grab that weight. This time, a bit more explosive. Make sure that when you're landing, you're landing nice and soft and absorb the impact by going down right away. Okay, like a spring. Here we go. Ready? So down and up, land, up, land. Two, one, and done. Okay. Okay, take another minute. Take a rest, take some water, walk around. Okay, and then back to the floor. Uh. And we're gonna get ready for our two deep breaths. In through the nose, out through the mouth, raising the arms up, ready? And some shoulder circles again. Relieve some of that tension in our neck. I'm sitting down at that computer. <laughs> Other direction. Okay, all right, we're gonna transition to our back now that we brought our heart rate down a little bit. So we'll go ahead. And you're gonna lie down on your back. Okay, and we're gonna do some glutes variation, some glute bridge variation. So I want you to start with the basic, general, standard glute bridge, both feet planted on the floor, hands down at the sides, rest your head down, squeeze the glutes, lift the butt off the ground and hold for two seconds and then down. And then keep that going. Make sure to press more into your heels and down. Just a standard hip thrust, engaging those glutes. Take some pressure away from your hip flexors, which are overused and stiff from being stuck in the same 90 degree kind of position from sitting. We're gonna switch to a single legged glute bridge. So pressing down with your right foot, your left leg is rested at 90 degrees, hanging, pressing and hold. And then without dropping down to the floor, just switch feet. And hold for about three seconds. You're maintaining that activation of the glutes. You're squeezing, you're pressing down with your heel into the floor. And you do that the whole time. No rest. Should be contracting continuously as you switch from left foot to right foot.
one more each side. That's one and two and hold it. Don't drop it just yet. Keep that elevated. You're gonna hold for five, four, three, two and drop. Good. And we're gonna sit up. Beautiful. And we're just gonna do a couple different stretches while we're down here. So we're gonna start with a hurdler stretch. So one leg is straight, your other leg is bent. Bring it in to the top, point your toe to the ceiling. Don't grab your toe, but just kind of rest your hands on top of your leg and then hold this. And point your toe forward to relieve a little bit of that stretch because it could uh, get a little tight. And now point it again towards you and high to the ceiling and reach a little further. You should feel that right underneath your leg there pulling. Okay, and point the toe forwards to release, switching sides. And again, pointing that toe towards you and up. And that might even be enough. <laughs> I can feel that already without even reaching. I've always had a really tight um, lower body in general on my left side. Um, and that's just a structural imbalance that I've had forever. Um, just extremely tight IT band and uh, just a lot of the connective tissue from the hip and the knee and uh, really tight hamstrings and calves and everything. So, and release it, point the toes forward. And again, point it towards you and reach if you need to. Okay, release it, perfect. Keeping the right knee bent, sticking that other leg behind into the pigeon pose. You're gonna feel some tightness here in the hip flexor area, as well as outside on the opposite side around the glutes and just kind of hold that here. And if you need more of a stretch, just lean forward. <clears throat> My back leg isn't fully extended, it's a little bent. I can't go any further at the moment. <laughs> And leaning back, just to kind of lean back. And you're going to feel the same pull in the hip flexor, but no more stretch in the glute. And now pull that leg up and we're going to switch. So that's that leg down and your back leg is bent. And there we go. And then you're just going to hold that here. If you need more of a stretch, lean forward. I don't at the moment. If you do, go for it. Okay, and then lean back off to the side and you should feel the hip flexor. So on the front of the, of the hip and the leg there, stretching. Okay, and then we're gonna go back to our four point position. So hands and knees, just a couple cat-cow stretches. So just as a refresher, hands underneath the shoulders and you're gonna arc your back nice and high and then sink down. And when you arc it high, try to engage the abdominals a little bit too. So I don't just mean sucking in the stomach, but you actually wanna to try to engage and contract, flex your stomach muscles. So up, flex those stomach muscles and then back down and we'll go two more. Up and down. Last one each, up, down. Sitting on the heels now, finish off with the child's pose. Hold that stretch, head down, reach nice and forward. Sliding the hands backwards as we lean back. And going down one more time, stretching out forward, head down, sitting on the heels. Hold that there.
and sliding it back to finish with one deep breath. And done. Awesome. Thanks everyone for joining today's functional training workout. Um, hope you had a good quick little exercise session there and uh, got the body moving. And um, again, if you try to sit down, try to incorporate some of these movements throughout the day uh, if you are sitting uh, at a desk for a long period of time. Okay, so have a good rest of the week, everybody. And we'll see you, uh, we'll see you all here same time uh, next week. All right, be well.